welcome back today uh, we shall take up a new topic uh, after we have learnt about the estimation methods of various types of properties which will be utilized now for further analysis now today we shall be looking into the flow of the uh, natural gas uh, and because this knowledge will be required uh, for further analysis and design of the various types of fluid moving machineries like compressor pumps etc and also the various types of flow measuring devices so we shall be looking into the fluid flow in natural gas systems in this lecture we shall be learning about the fluid flow over a surface uh, then we shall go to some uh, boundary layer concepts uh, followed by reynolds number then laminar and turbulent flow pressure drop and two phase flow first let us go to the fluid flow over a surface now whenever there is a fluid flow uh, on a surface the fluid encounters some kind of resistance to its path and this resistance is called some drag and this drag is caused by um, primarily two effects one is the friction between the fluid and the surface which we call the skin drag and then whenever a fluid is flowing there might be the uh, the fluid might change its direction during its flow uh, so in that case um, uh, we have the form drag so like for example the fluid is flowing through some elbow or some t joint so in this case for what we will find that there is a change in the uh, direction of the flow so this causes form drag now because of this drag there will be a uh, reduction in the energy of the fluid that means this will be reflected in terms of the pressure drop so and this you know, pre if there is too much of pressure drop what will happen the flow may cease at some point of time so we have to see to it that whatever pressure drop occurs that should be compensated for, for by uh, supplying energy to the fluid from external sources that is why it is important for us to understand the fluid flow and generally the velocity of the fluid is taken to be zero uh, at the wall uh, this is because of a property called viscosity and this particular uh, assumption is called no slip condition this no slip condition does not hold for ideal fluids ideal fluids means those fluids which have zero viscosity and as we move away from the wall we find that the drag effects reduces and the fluid velocity again starts increasing and ultimately it may attain the free stream velocity of the fluid the flow may have different nature it may be laminar it may be turbulent or it may be somewhere in between which we call the transition zone now we come to boundary layer now boundary layer is a concept which was uh, proposed by prantl ludwig prantl uh, to explain some of these flow phenomena now first let us understand what is boundary layer this boundary layer signifies the locus of the points away from the wall where the fluid ceases to experience the drag effect from the wall and the fluid stream attains the stream velocity now beyond this uh, so there is a particular thickness we assume that there is a thickness of the fluid above the wall within which the effect of the drag exists and beyond this boundary layer thickness fluid flow is not affected by the fluid velocity and there um, this bound and in this condition outside the boundary layer the fluid is treated independently as if there is no boundary layer now here in this particular figure we see that how this boundary layer exists see on this side on left hand side we see the fluid is coming with a free stream velocity of u0 and as it enters this particular uh, surface that uh, on the x axis we show x direction and the perpendicular this surface we call it y direction so initially what happens that the fluid comes in contact 
with the wall and the uh, because it has zero velocity at the wall. So, the whatever fluid elements are above the wall will get retarded by the fluid which is below it and slowly and slowly we find a certain kind of layer is uh, developing and here in this particular figure we are showing that how the fluid velocity changes from the wall to 0 and up to the free stream velocity and this boundary layer keeps developing uh, as we go inside the surface and then initially it may be a laminar boundary layer then there would be some kind of transition where we are showing that some kind of disturbance are, are is taking place. So, this tra in transition zone it will be sometimes laminar sometimes um, uh, turbulent. So, it is always changing its nature and ultimately we go to the turbulent uh, boundary layer as we move in still inside the uh, surface. And here we have sh we are showing some layers like near the surface we have a viscous sub layer then we have some buffer layer, some overlap layer and ultimately we have a turbulent zone. So, this is the overall picture we visualize to understand the fluid flow and this kind of things are purely conceptual. We try to put these concepts into use in explaining the various types of fluid flow phenomena. Next we come to some rudimentary knowledge about laminar and turbulent flow. Now, this you can observe many a times in your at your home, at your workplace uh, around you. So, this you can see that we have taken a very simple example which uh, you may find at your um, workplace or home that a water is flowing through a tap. Now, in this case we see that um, when the tap is opened a little we find water will uh, initially form some bubble and when at certain opening you will find the continuous flow of water starts and initially you will find this flow is very very uh, systematic means it is not uh, going take a very very definite path. So, this particular flow is the laminar flow, but as you keep opening the valve of the tap you find that the flow becomes more and slowly and slowly the flow becomes more and more irregular and in this case you will find ultimately you will find the flow is very irregular and you approach the turbulent flow. So, this is a very general observation which you find in your day to day life. Now, this observation now we try to give some kind of um, definition to this that in laminar flow we assume that the fluid particles are going into a, some irregular paths. Now, the when I say regular path it means that it may go in a straight path or it may take some curved path, but it is going in a regular fashion and we also assume that the fluid is moving in a layer by layer manner and each layer is having different momentum. That means, the layer which is nearest to the wall will be having less momentum and as we move away from the wall the momentum of the fluid particles will increase. So, there will always be some kind of momentum exchange between two consecutive fluid layers and we also assume that there is no intermixing of particles between two consecutive fluid layers and this kind of laminar flow takes place at low velocity. Now, next this all this phenomena is indicated by uh, Reynolds number about which we shall be learning a bit later. Now, here I have shown by a picture that how we visualize the laminar flow to take place in some kind of a conduit. Here we see that the arrows are indicating that is a quite regular flow and the length of the arrows um, uh, is indicating that the fluid velocity magnitude of the fluid velocity the smaller arrow means lower lower velocity and the longer arrow means the higher velocity. Now, next we come to turbulent flow. Now, unlike the laminar flow in the turbulent flow the fluid particles go into very irregular path and there will be intermixing of the uh, particles between two consecutive layers and it takes place at higher velocity and again it is indicated by Reynolds number. Now, here I have shown in the picture that how we visualize the turbulent flow take place. So, we can see that the fluid particles take various types of path zigzag path and there are these lots of disturbances sometimes we call them vortices or eddies. 
So, these eddies and vortices are formed in the turbulent flow. Next, we come to Reynolds number. The Reynolds number you will find has a very, very big use in the study of the transport phenomena that is fluid dynamics, then heat transfer and mass transfer. So, Reynolds number is used to identify the various types of flow regimes. Then this Reynolds number is also used to uh, characterize and estimate the various parameters which are involved in the study of the transport phenomena. For example, in case of fluid mechanics, we find the friction factor. In case of heat transfer, we find the heat transfer coefficient. And in case of mass transfer, we find the mass transfer coefficient by the knowledge of the Reynolds number. And this is defined as some the ratio of the inertial force to the viscous force and is given by this uh, uh, expression that rho u l by mu and rho is the fluid density, mu is the fluid viscosity, u is some characteristic fluid velocity and l is some characteristic length and this can again be written in another way u l by mu where mu is the kinematic viscosity of the fluid and which is nothing but the ratio of the dynamic viscosity and the density. Now, let us come to the pressure drop. As I told you, the pressure drop is caused by drag on the fluid while it flows. So, this particular pressure drop um, depends on the rate of fluid flow, the internal diameter of any closed conduit in through which it is flowing or for because of a open channel, it depends on the length traversed by the fluid from the starting point on the surface and then pipe length, then fluid pressure, then fluid temperature, various fluid properties like density and viscosity and then the surface roughness of the pipe wall. As we know that the rougher the wall or the surface, the more will be the drag effect, more will be the resistance to its flow. So, the, this kind of uh, the, the effect of the surface roughness, we also feel ourselves when we are walking on the sand or on a very smooth tile. tile. So, you will find that the surface roughness makes us, makes our walking easier or difficult in these two cases. In similar manner, the surface roughness dictates the resistance that will be offered to the fluid by the surface. Now, in this particular figure, we have shown the pressure drop per unit length as a function of the flow rate. And here we find at lower flow rate, where the, we have laminar flow, in between we have some transition zone and ultimately it goes to a turbulent flow. And what also we find that the slope of this line changes from 1 to 2. Now, this is on a log log scale. We are plotting log, uh, this is delta P by L that we, uh, this is a pressure difference per unit length. That is the pressure gradient and log of the uh, flow velocity. Next, we come to the pressure drop for laminar flow. Now, in the laminar flow, we have many expressions can which can be derived theoretically and one of the expressions which is very commonly used is hagen poisson equation. In this, it is given by this particular uh, expression. This can be derived also. I am not going into derivation on this. This you can find in any standard fluid mechanics book. So, in this particular expression, we find that delta P is the pressure drop, mu is the fluid viscosity, L is the pipe length and Q naught is the volumetric flow rate of the fluid and R is the pipe radius. So, this expression is used to find out the pressure drop. In fact, this hagen poisson equation is also used to determine the viscosity of a fluid through a um, pipeline. So, we can, we can also use this hagen poisson equation to find out the viscosity of a fluid. And next, we come to the friction factor. Now, the friction factor is used to determine the pressure drop uh, through a uh, over a surface. Now, this friction factor may be used for both laminar flow as well as for turbulent flow. Now, it signifies the fraction of the inertial energy of the fluid lost 
to overcome the drag resistance during the fluid flow. That means whenever a fluid is flowing, it with it it takes some energy which is the kinetic energy uh, half rho v square that is the kinetic energy per unit volume half rho v square and out of this total energy this inertial energy how much is expended is lost to overcome the drag experienced by the fluid over the surface and during the flow path. So, this this fraction is the friction factor and it is expressed in terms of the Reynolds number and it depends on the Reynolds number and it varies from system to system. That means, it might be something for single phase, something for the two phase, something in a packed bed, something like that. It depends on the system, we will have different types of friction factor expressions as function of Reynolds number. It is defined as I told you that F is the friction factor, the is ratio of the pressure drop and divided and the kinetic energy of the fluid. So, if I want to know the pressure drop, I can if I know the friction factor, then I can multiply this half rho v square into friction factor to get the pressure drop in a system. Now, sometimes we uh, express the friction loss, friction drag in terms of head, head is in terms of length, any kind of head may, we mean that we are talking in terms of some length dimension. So, for laminar flow, this is the expression for the frictional head loss and for the turbulent flow, this is the expression for the frictional head loss. Uh, and here we find that H f is the uh, friction head loss and rest of the things say so f is the friction factor, R e is Reynolds number, d is the pipe diameter, L is the pipe length and u is the fluid velocity and g is the acceleration due to gravity. So, these are some expressions which have been obtained through some experimental data uh, for the laminar flow and for the turbulent flow. Next, we come to the estimation of the friction factor. There are various uh, correlations proposed to find out the friction factor. Uh, some of the commonly used correlations which are used in the natural gas sector are given here. First, we come to the Frisch equation, and then Blechius equation, Muller equation, Polyflow equation, po Panhandle A equation, Moody's diagram. And we shall see one by one what are these. These are the various types of uh, equations you can find the expressions here and this is uh, um, uh, applicable for compressed air and gas piping. Then we have Blechius equation, this is for turbulent flow in smooth conduits. Then we have Muller equation with then polyflow equation, panhandle and uh, the Moody's diagram. So, we can see that there are a host of equations which are applicable under different situations in the uh, case of natural gas flow and it, nothing to uh, cram these equations. You have to remember uh, that there are many equations are existing and whenever needed, you refer to the literature to find out the expression and apply them appropriately. Now, here this particular Moody's diagram you can see that which is uh, very commonly used and we can see this uh, in uh, magnified view that in this case we are plotting on a semi log scale the friction factor and the Reynolds number and here you see that for laminar flow we have a pretty straight line and in case of the turbulent flow we have several lines and all these lines are have a parameter which is the roughness factor. So, depending on the roughness we will find for the turbulent uh, flow we have for the same Reynolds number but different uh, different uh, roughness factor, we will be having different values of the friction factor. So, this Moody's diagram is very commonly used to estimate the friction factor. Other than that also, we may have some other specialized correlation for that particular system. Now, next we come to two phase flow. Now, two phase flow has many peculiarity and we encountered such kind of flow whenever there is um, a situation that two separate phases are flowing together and these two phases may flow together because we have two different kinds of fluids or in some systems uh, a liquid uh, may evaporate or boil off generating the vapor or a vapor while flowing can get, con can get condensed and generate liquid. In that way also we can in situ generate a two phase flow and especially in case of natural gas systems, 
um, and when we are trying to store natural gas as liquefied natural gas that is LNG, all these kind of two phase phenomena are very common and they are um, they are in the some uh, heat exchangers in the pipelines during storage, during transport due to boil off evaporation or vapor condensation. So, these all generate two phase flow in a natural gas system and that is why it is important for us to understand have some idea about the two phase flow. What we shall learn here that uh, some of the flow regimes two phase flow give rise to different types of flow regimes as we shall see. So, first we shall come to bubbly flow. Now, in this bubbly flow what we find that uh, there are two things we can say one is the continuous flow and there is the dispersed flow. In the bubbly flow the liquid is the continuous flow whereas, the gas bubbles are the uh, dispersed flow. So, we see in this particular figure that gas bubbles are getting dispersed in a liquid and then we have the slug flow what happens that as we start increasing the gas flow rate the bubbles coalesce and they make a bigger bubble we call them slug. So, that is how we get slug flow and next we come to churn flow at still higher flow rate of the uh, of the um, uh, vapor we find that now the big big slugs are formed and they now come to churn they disturb the disturb the whole um, uh, flow. So, that we call churn flow mixing there is lot of mixing the churn flow and lastly we have annular um, uh, mist flow ok. Let me tell you that in this case we have this we, uh, in the churn flow we call them Taylor bubble. So, you will also find in literature, literature they talk of Taylor bubbles. Now, in the annular mist flow now the situation reverses in the mist flow what happens the liquid now becomes the dispersed phase whereas, the vapor will become the continuous phase that means, the these are what we are finding that the mist of the liquid is now formed in the vapor because at this is the vapor flow rate has become much much high. So, that the ratio of the vapor to liquid flow rate is now very high. So, at low vapor to liquid ratio we have bubble flow whereas, at high vapor to liquid flow ratio we have annular flow. So, various kind of flow regimes are possible and depending on the orientation of the pipe whether it is vertical or horizontal we will have different types of flow regimes and each flow regime will have its different characteristics of flow uh, pressure drop and heat transfer and mass transfer that is why it is important for us to know the various types of flow regimes. Now, here we have some heavy diagram which gives us we can tell us that for vertical flow what kind of flow regimes we can have and you can see on the x axis we have some kind of a rho L and J L factor this J L is given in terms of the gas flow rate and area of cross section and similarly on the y axis we have rho G and G J factor J G factor which is given in terms of the gas flow rate and the area of cross section. So, all these things are used to find out that what kind of uh, flow we shall be uh, obtaining in this kind of two phase flow in a vertical pipeline. Next we go to two phase flow in a horizontal pipeline and here we have some stratified flow this stratified flow means that the vapor is flowing over the liquid that means there are two strata or layer. So, the two layers are formed below because the liquid is denser it will be on the below and above that there will be vapor and again we have two types of stratified flow depending on the flow ratio. In one case the fluid top layer interface may be very very smooth without disturbed and another case we find that there will be kind of waves form something like what you the waves you find on the rivers or the ponds or the sea. Similar that at high uh, vapor velocity it will disturb the interface between the liquid and the vapor. And then we have some elongated bubbly flow and the slug flow the things are similar they are also inter some intermittent flow and here also we find that depending on the ratio of the vapor to liquid flow we can have this bubble flow and slug flow and uh, there may be this elongated bubble flow is a limiting case of slug flow because this slug is free of any kind of entrained gas bubbles there is no the liquid does not carry any bubble so this becomes a becomes a uh, limiting case uh, of the slug flow and uh, there will be some this will be unsteadiness means it will not be steady it will be sometimes the slugs the sizes of these bubbles will keep on changing from time to time. So, it is an unsteady uh, flow and this liquid side uh, slugs will fill up the whole pipeline. 
Now, next is the annular flow. In this annular flow, we find that its annular is formed. That means the uh, vapor uh, goes through the middle of the pipeline, whereas the liquid is pushed to the walls. So that is why it's called annular flow. This, this, is, this is we find the vapor is going, and on the wall we have the uh, liquid. This is the annular flow, and here we have the dispersed bubble flow. It is similar to the one we found for the vertical pipe that the bubbles, the vapor is now dispersed phase and the liquid is the continuous phase. And these bubbles are present throughout the cross section. Now, here we show the Baker's diagram which is a very common diagram to identify the flow regimes. It is very commonly used in the two phase literature and on this vapor diagram again we have two parameters on uh, here we have the g that is the gas velocity and here x is the quality that is the vapor fraction and lambda is given by this particular factor and then on the uh, um, x axis we have the gas flow rate this 1 minus x is the liquid fraction and psi is given by this particular expression. Now, you can see in it here it also depends on not only the viscosity and uh, density, but also on the surface tension. So, this surface tension is also important uh, property to decide the type of the two phase flow and this Baker diagram can be used to identify that which regime we are in and this will also help us to decide the liquid and vapor flow rates in practice. Now, uh, another important parameter is the pressure drop in any system and as we learned for the um, single phase flow some expressions for the uh, calculation of the pressure drop in case of the two phase flow systems we have a very commonly used uh, um, expression that is the Lockhart Martinelli equation. There are many other expressions also, but this is very commonly used and in this case we find the two phase pressure drop is related to the um, pressure drop through the liquid only and with some parameter phi L where phi L is given by this particular expression and, uh, and here we find that x square this x square is given by some ratio of the pressure drop per unit length in the liquid to pressure drop per unit length if the flow were only vapor. So, this particular uh, ratio is given by x x and then we have the Reynolds number for the liquid and for the gas and we are here we have the mass flow rate, the inner diameter of the tube, viscosity and area of cross section. And here we can have various types of combinations. Uh, to determine the value of the C which is used to find out the phi L. Here we find for if the liquid uh, is turbulent, gas is turbulent, we have some value of C. So, we have various combinations that uh, liquid turbulent, gas turbulent, liquid laminar, gas turbulent, liquid turbulent, gas laminar and both are in laminar flow and we have di different values of C's here. And here in this case we find the values of the other parameters m n c g c l which are also used in this uh, expressions. So, these are for various types of Reynolds number we have these values and this c l c g are appearing in here. So, this m n c g c l they are dependent on the Reynolds number. So, this is the Lockhart Martinelli equation for the calculation of the two phase pressure drop. So, and to know more about this, you can refer to some of these uh, references and also any book on two phase flow or fluid mechanics uh, to get more knowledge about this, all these topics. Thank you.